Hi guys, Olive here, here today to show you my summer book haul. Like a typical book lover, I am nearly constantly acquiring books. I go to a lot of library book sales and used bookstores specifically, so I bring a number of books into this reading room on a regular basis. But I went through that giant stack of books, the incoming stack that always seems to be in here. I picked the ones that feel the most summery, and those are the ones I'm going to show you today. I'm going to start off by showing you all the fiction books I picked up, and there aren't a ton in this haul because over the past couple of years, I've been pulling back a lot on buying fiction. I've been trying to read what I already own to clear off some shelf space. But I did get a handful, a very small handful that I'll show you in this haul. A couple were sent to me by publishers. One of them was a gift, and then there were also a few that I got for myself. One of those was a library book sale find called The Secret of Clouds by Allison Richman. This book is about a teacher who is asked to tutor a 12 year old boy whose parents lived in Ukraine around the time of the Chernobyl disaster. Well, because they were exposed to radiation, this boy was born with a rare heart condition, but everyone in his life, including this tutor who comes into his life, helps him live his life to the fullest. I picked this book up at the library book sale because of this gorgeous cover, but I brought it home because of that premise. This next book is one I received from the publisher, and it also has a really gorgeous cover. It's called You Are Here by Karen Lynn Greenberg. This novel takes place during the buildup to the closure of a once vibrant shopping mall in upstate New York. We get to see how the decline of that mall and an act of violence affects everyone in the community. So we've got the full cast of characters of this small town. It just sounded really interesting, so I'm looking forward to reading it. Then a friend of mine gifted me a copy of Painted Black by Janet Fitch, since she and I read White Oleander together earlier this year. She's already read this, and she thought I would really like this too. This is about a model living in Los Angeles who forms a very twisted relationship with her late boyfriend's mother. I'm going to try to go into this not expecting the same experience as White Oleander. I've heard this is a very different book, but I am hoping that more of that gorgeous writing is in here. This next book I decided to buy because I know I'm going to be putting it on a TBR here very soon. It's called A Theater for Dreamers by Polly Sampson. This book takes place on a Greek island in 1960. A young girl is drawn into this circle of artists, a few of whom have very complex relationships with one another. That premise to me sounded a lot like The Strays by Emily Bitto, which is a novel that I loved when I first read it. I still love it now. Would love to reread it, actually. Then there's the fact that the Storygraph recommended this to me. And as part of that ongoing project to read more of their recommendations, I wanted to take them up on this. But then the third thing that made me absolutely positive that I was going to pick this book up is the fact that this author is the mother of Charlie Gilmore, who wrote Feather Hood. It's a memoir that I adored. I reviewed it here on my channel. And this is his mother. She's a novelist. So I feel like everything is just pointing me in the direction of this book. Then the final novel that I have to show you in this haul is another one I got from a publisher, only this one was unsolicited. I had no idea they were sending this to me. It's called Where Waters Meet by Zhang Ling. This is about a Chinese Canadian woman who is looking to learn more about her mother's life and any secrets she may have been keeping after after her mother's death. This cover is gorgeous, first of all, loving the colors. The premise sounded really intriguing. I'm really glad this showed up on my doorstep. But now let's move on to nonfiction, starting with Pacific. Silicon chips and surfboards, coral reefs and atom bombs, brutal dictators and fading empires by Simon Winchester. I found this one at a library book sale. It's essentially a biography of the Pacific Ocean and an examination of its role in our modern world. Another biography of a body of water that I picked up is called Sippy Wisset or Life on a Salt Marsh by Tim Traver. This book discusses the New England salt marsh that's located close to Martha's Vineyard. I've actually never been there, but I would really like to visit. And if and when I do so, I will bring this book along. I also got The Lost City of the Monkey God by Douglas Preston. This is about the author's experience joining a team of scientists looking to learn more about a lost city, a whole lost civilization in the Honduran rainforest. 
So this book seems to be part history, part adventure, part travel story. But then there's also a medical element thrown in there as well, because this author and a number of people on this team came down with a mystery disease as they were doing all of this. This sounds absolutely fascinating. But speaking of the rainforest, I also got a death in the rainforest, how a language and a way of life came to an end in Papua New Guinea by Don Kulik. In this book, the author describes describes the language, the culture, the way of life in a tiny village that is on the verge of disappearing as the world continues to change. Next, I got The Island of the Colorblind by Oliver Sacks. If you are a nonfiction lover like myself, then you may know that this author wrote a number of books on psychology. And in this one, he looks at the effects of isolation on the human psyche by traveling to a tiny Micronesian island to study a community of people who were born completely colorblind. Blind. This seems to be one of his lesser known works. I'm actually surprised and very grateful that I was able to find this one at a used bookstore. But then oppositely, I also got The World According to Color, A Cultural History by James Fox. This is a genre blending nonfiction book about color, but it's also about the meanings that we humans attach to different colors. But then more specifically, I got Blue, The Science and Secrets of Nature's Rarest Color by Kai Kupferschmidt in which the author looks exclusively at the color blue and talks about just how rare it is in nature. But then from blue to the deep blue, I also picked up Voyage of the Turtle, In Pursuit of the Earth's Last Dinosaur by Carl Safina. This is a natural history of the leatherback turtle. And then I actually got a second book on turtles. This next one is called Life in a Shell, A Psychologist's View of a Turtle by Donald C. Jackson. In this book, the author shares his thoughts on turtles, having observed them for his entire life. I feel like between these two books and then Cy Montgomery's upcoming release, it's turning into a banner year for turtles. But then I got a book about a different sea creature. This book is called Stung on Jellyfish Blooms and the Future of the Ocean by Lisa Ann Gershwin. This was written by a jellyfish expert. She talks about these remarkable creatures and she also talks about how their population blooms are highly indicative of the health of the world's oceans. After being severely let down, we'll say, by a different jellyfish book called Spineless by Julie Bearwald, I've been keeping an eye out for another book on jellyfish because I'm not mad at the jellyfish because of that book. I'd like to learn more about them. And this one just sounds amazing. Still on the topic of oceans, I also got a book called Slime, How Algae Created Us, Plague Us, and Just Might Save Us by Ruth Cassinger. This book discusses algae, also known as seaweed, and all the different ways it can be used as a resource. But this next book I'm going to show you probably discusses substances that we use in less positive ways. That book is called A Brief History of Vice, How Bad Behavior Built Civilization by Robert Evans. In this book, the author talks about how debauchery has always coexisted with human civilization. I remember a booktuber picked this one up a number of years ago. I completely forget who, but I was reminded of that when I saw this at a library book sale and I grabbed this so fast. And the good times continue with the next book because it's called Nothing But a Good Time, The Uncensored History of the 80s Hard Rock Explosion. This is a massive oral history of the music scene in the 1980s. I love a good book on music. I love a good oral history. And this was an era that I wasn't around to experience. So I am sure this is going to be a whole new world for me. Moving on, I also got a couple of sports books. This first one is a rather famous one called Moneyball by Michael Lewis. I have read a few of Michael Lewis's books, but I've never read this one, which is about a baseball manager's creative use of statistics to turn a low budget team into a contender. I definitely have more of an interest in baseball this year because our baseball team, the Pittsburgh Pirates, are actually half decent when they haven't been for a very long time. But also, I'm just really surprised that I haven't gotten around to reading this yet. So it's good I have this one in my possession. Then the other and final sports book I have to show you was actually a gift from my husband. It's called What's the Score? 25 Years of Teaching Women's Sports History by Bonnie J. Morris. The author of this book is a professor at UC Berkeley. And in this book, she does discuss women's sports, but she also discusses her own experiences teaching students about women's sports over the course of her career. 
It is currently WNBA season. It's my favorite time of year. And I know this author discusses the league in this book. And that's one of many reasons why I can't wait to read this. But since that book had a memoir element that allows me to segue very nicely into all the memoirs that I've picked up recently, there have been quite a few of them, including Dancing Fish and Ammonites by Penelope Lively. This is a memoir in essays that all seem to explore the concept of passing time. The next memoir I picked up is called Long Live the Tribe of Fatherless Girls by T. Kira Madden. In this book, the author recounts her childhood, which was filled with both privilege, since she's related to Steve Madden, the shoe king, but also instability because both of her parents were battling addictions during her upbringing. I have heard amazing things about this memoir. Picking it up at a library book sale was a no-brainer. This next one I picked up because it reminded me even just a little bit of Lab Girl by Hope Jarin, one of my all-time favorite nonfiction books. It's called Girl Decoded by Rana El Kalyubi. This is the memoir of one of the very first female computer programmers in the Middle East. And then I finally got myself a copy of the extraordinarily popular memoir, The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. This is the story of her very unusual upbringing, and it's very surprising to me that as a nonfiction lover, I haven't read this yet. It really does feel like everyone on earth has read this except me. And I honestly wasn't feeling the pull to read it all that much until fairly recently. I just read and reviewed her latest novel, which is called Hang the Moon. And I really enjoyed that. It made me want to pick up more of her work. So I will get to this one eventually. Another popular one, I got a copy of The Princess Diarist by the late, great Carrie Fisher. This was her final book before her death, and in it, she discusses what it was like filming Star Wars. It being the unofficial wedding season here in the Northern Hemisphere, I thought this was a good time of year to show off my new-to-me copy of Committed by Elizabeth Gilbert. This is by the author of Eat, Pray, Love, which is another very popular nonfiction book that I have not read yet. I do really enjoy her fiction, however. But in this book, she talks about how she decided to get married after swearing off marriage entirely. Now, this book having been written a number of years ago, I know that Elizabeth Gilbert has since divorced the man that she talks about marrying in this book. It was amicable, but I do think it will add an interesting layer to this reading experience. Another thing that will add something to this reading experience is the fact that I'm celebrating 10 years of marriage to my husband this year. So the topic of marriage is just on my brain right now. And then the final memoir in this haul, the final book in this book, Hall is the only book in this hall that I have already read. It's called Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb. The author of this book is a therapist who actually sought out her own therapist after a sudden breakup. She talks about her experiences with that therapist, but also her experiences with her clients within this book. I absolutely fell in love with this the first time I read it. I reviewed it here on my channel. It has since gone on to become an all-time favorite nonfiction book of mine, but I didn't own my own copy of it. I like to own my own copy of favorite books, especially ones that I could see myself rereading, and I could definitely see myself rereading this book. So those are all the books in this summer book haul. If you have any of your own thoughts on these books, if you want to read them, or if you have read them, you want to share your opinions, I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. In the description box below, you will find links to all of the books I mentioned today, any other links I may have promised you. Everything will be down there for your clicking convenience. And in that exact same description box at the very bottom, you'll see links to everywhere you can find me around the internet, like Goodreads, Instagram, the Storygraph, all the places I'm the most active in case you would like to keep up with what I am reading and writing about right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will see you in the next video. Bye.